Uh. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Proto-Martyr album, Relatives in Descent. This is the latest full-length album from Detroit rock and post-punk band Proto-Martyr. It's, it's their fourth album. Fourth album. Four whole albums. Congrats, boys. The band's last album dropped in 2015, The Agent Intellect, which was pretty good. You know, it, it wasn't amazing, but it showed a lot of promise. The lyrics were pretty great a lot of the time. The songs were very dreary, very compelling, very dark. The band just had a depressing vibe that I could soak in. And the driving guitars and drums had a really classic post-punk sound. But as much as I enjoy those very obvious influences from bands like Bauhaus and Joy Division, it, it was all very one note. Like, I love Joe Casey as a vocalist, but some of the instrumental performances on this thing were kind of boring, a little flat. The guitar work a lot of the time wasn't anything to write home about. The production didn't have a whole lot of bite to it either. However, their new record over here, to my ears, feels like a big improvement. The band really coming into their own stylistically and instrumentally instrumentally in a lot of ways. I mean, for one, the drums, the guitars, the musical compositions overall are way more dynamic. You know, not just tediously hammering out all of these quarter notes and eighth notes. The band repeatedly dishes out these danceable yet despondent grooves. Eerily beautiful chord progressions as well, and I would say the lyrics are more dramatic and poetic than ever. But don't be mistaken, there's a lot of grime and grit on this album too. The opening track on this thing is a prime example of that exact balance the band strikes, which they carry out throughout much of the album. The lyrics are absolutely crushing, referencing a moment in Elvis's life around Flagstaff when he had like a bit of a religious epiphany, then taking that story further down the road to the point where he would be dead on the bathroom floor. Then you have like the closing haunting mantra on this song. She's just trying to reach you. She's just trying to reach you. Which is met with a wall of distorted guitars and fluttering strings. It, it's a real trip. And the record just keeps getting better and better and more interesting from here. Yeah, the very intense and rambling Here's the Thing, Joe's vocals on this track are incredible and, and very ranty. I love the dramatic drumming, the grimy bass line, the kind of echo-drenched garagey guitars that kind of remind me of a band like The Cramps. I just wish the song had a more definitive ending, though. But again, thoroughly impressed with the vocals. A lot of the time they feel like a emotional or a poetic exorcism, like on the song My Children, which features all these tense building guitars, and like a disjointed diatribe about procreating, having kids, passing things on to the next generation. But it's not, it's... <laughs> It's not the most positive track in the world. There's kind of a dark side to it as well. I also love the lyrics on the song The Chuckler, which to me read is, I don't know, almost like a message to the audience that they should or that the band is laughing in the face of the darkest things that life and the world has to offer. Talking about all of it as if it's just one big joke. I also love the very jangly, tense chord progressions on this track, some of the plucky guitar phrasing. And the strings that come in later add so much body to the usually muddy mayhem on this project. I also love the frightening instrumental tone that the band brings to the table on the song Windsor Hum, as well as the very very tight and punchy driving. Don't go to Anaceta. And there's this really awesome, noisy and pleasant back and forth going on on the song Up the Tower, where you have these very sweet, kind of dramatic verses that transition into these noisy, distorted, frenzied sort of refrains where you constantly have uh, shouted over and over, knock down, knock down. I mean, the song Mail Plague, Mail Plague is incredibly catchy as well. I just love that the band is writing some of their most intricate and interesting and layered and complex instrumentals yet while simultaneously bringing some of their best hooks, some of their most heartbreaking lyrics, some of their most heartbreaking melodies. The band is truly embodying darkness and sorrow in a really tasteful way and pulling it together with just, again, some, some great post-punk style instrumentation. With some strings here, some keyboards there, just to add that extra bit of oomph, that little extra embellishment, just to provide more sonic flavor. The closing track is one of the most grand and beautiful on the entire record and brings back that she's just trying to reach you mantra that the album kicked off with. So it is like a little bit of a reprise or just kind of referencing uh, itself back, you know, kind of tying the whole album up almost as if there's, you know, some kind of theme to this whole thing that is going to reveal itself once I listen to it a little bit more. As far as some complaints that I have about this record, there are a few tracks that were a little underwritten, I think could have had a stronger end or had a little bit more to them in terms of length. 
Um, the production could have been a bit more crisp, though I think the muddiness worked in favor of the album more than it did against it. And finally, Joe Casey, as much as I love his lyrics on this thing, and that's definitely a selling point, and I think he is a very compelling performer, like he definitely delivers some very emotional performances that I connect to and that I enjoy quite a bit. Uh, having said that though, he just, ugh, more than on any other previous Proto Martyr album, just is such like a dead ringer for a young Nick Cave on this thing, to the point where it's it's truly just distracting. And I feel that distraction kind of melting away the more that I listen to the project again and again and again, but, you know, if only he could have, um, you know, sort of... Uh, delivered his vocals in a way where Nick Cave's influence is not so painfully obvious on him. And I guess finally, you know, I can say while this is one of the better post-punk albums I've heard in a while, it's not exactly reinventing or pushing the genre forward or anything like that. It's just a very good release within that style. A actually, a very great release in that style. I'm feeling a decent eight on this thing. Tran. Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Just leave an angry comment in the comments if you're angry over here. Next to my head is another Proto Martyr review that you can check out. You can hit that or you can click on the link to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay hydrated and uh, eat those fruits and veggies. Maybe think about going vegan. That'd probably be good. Uh, forever.